Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. The Bangle Sellers written by Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu was born in the year 1879 and died in the year 1949. First, we will have to know about the poet herself so that we can learn better about the poem The Bangle Sellers which we are going to do today. Sarojini Naidu was a great patriot. Patriot means he used to, she used to fight for the country. She was a freedom fighter and poet of modern India. She was born in a Bengali family on February 13, 1879, where at Hyderabad and was educated in Chennai, London and Cambridge. So she was educated in three places. She was known as the Nightingale of India. This is very important information that we get from her that she was known as the Nightingale of India and she composed poetry in which swift thoughts and strong emotions sprang into lyrics by themselves. Whatever she wrote was very much lyrical. There was a very beautiful rhyme in the poem, very beautiful essence in the poem and it also constituted a lot of beautiful and strong emotions held together. There was also a deeper meaning in all her poems. She has given expression to the joys. So we uh, know about the various forms of joys she has talked about in her poems. And also simultaneously, she talked about the sorrows of lives. She was sensitive to the beauty of living things. Her poetry includes various forms of poetry and it includes poems for children, nature poems, patriotic poems and poems of love and death. Most importantly, because we will do one of the poems written by Sarojini Naidu, we must also know what is this poem all about. The poem, The Bangle Sellers, from the name we come to know that we, are, we will be talking about some sellers who sell what? They sell bangles by Sarojini Naidu is a folk song that celebrates the values and virtues of Indian womanhood. Values and virtues means there was some sort of ideas that had to be followed, some standards that the women had to follow of that period of time. With the help of a string of images, they have been associated with different colors of bangles. So we will see a number of different colored bangles and they revolve around the various stages of a woman's life and how these bangles are interconnected with the emotions, with the needs, the desires, what these women had to do, what they, what, what whether their standards, all these things had to be, is very well stated in our poem. The bangles are not just any ornament to be worn, but a symbolic representation of the various stages in the life of a typical Indian woman. So a typical Indian woman had some set standards that they had to put up daily and these set standards they had to follow and by relating to these beautiful colored bangles the poem is a very beautiful lyrical representation. It has a number of symbols, number of beautiful colors associated with bangles. Bangles are always associated with happiness but we will also know the symbolic representation of these bangles, how these bangles represent something deeper into the society. So let's start with the poem. The first lines of the poem say what? Bangle sellers are we who bear our shining loads to the temple fair. So the poem is all about the bangle sellers as the name suggests. The poem is about the bangle sellers, the people who have come to the temple fair. They have come to the place where there is a temple and beside it there is also a fair where they are going to sit and sell their goods. What are their goods? Their goods are these shining loads. They are carrying the shining loads on their heads and what are these loads? What do you mean by the word loads? Question may come like this. Loads are the shining bangles that they carry on their head. They shine by the light of the sun. The sun shines brightly on them and the glass bangles shine brightly. Okay, so this part is clear. From here we come to know that the bangle sellers are coming to the temple fair to sell their beautiful glass bangles. Let's move to the next picture.
what are the lines over here let's read the lines who will buy these delicate bright rainbow tinted circles of light lustrous tokens of radiant lives for happy daughters and happy wives from here we learn two more things first the bangal sellers are asking like we see the hawkers doing it they cry their uh, products uh, to sell them so these people are also crying out asking people to come and buy their delicate bright why delicate because they are glass bangles if you strike it it may break they are bright because they are of bright colors all these see there are so many bright colored bangles over here these are bright colored rainbow tinted why rainbow tinted the rainbow has so many colors in it isn't it and these bangles are also of various colors they are variedly colored multicolored like the colors of the rainbow so these circles of light they are the bangles of circular shape and they are multicolored huge number of colors are present over here then lustrous tokens of radiant lights what do you mean by lustrous lustrous means bright and tokens mean symbol these are the symbols of radiant lives radiant lives means these are for those people those women who are very happy and enjoying their time they are glad to have these bangles they are happy they want to wear these bangles and therefore they are the tokens or the symbols of happy women and young girls who win, who want to wear these bangles mainly girls and women come to these places to buy the bangles for happy daughters now question may come that for whom are these bangles sold these bangles are sold for the happy daughters and happy wives let's move to the next image the next image is just a picture which shows all about the poem that this poem is about few bangle sellers who have come to the temple fair to sell the bangles for whom for happy daughters and happy wives for all those people for all those women who are having a very happy life not for those who are a widow isn't it these bangles are not for a widow because in indian culture we often find this strange uh, uh, rules and regulations that the widowed women never wear any kind of beautiful or colorful bangles or clothes this was prevalent in a period which is not now but a long time back okay next we will move to the second stanza the second stanza reads some are meet for a maiden's wrist silver and blue as the mountain mist now the poet goes on describing the various color of the bangles which are suitable for a maiden maiden means the women who are unmarried young unmarried girls are called maiden now there are few bangles that the bangle sellers are sell selling which is suitable for a maiden or a young unmarried girl there are particular colored bangles which are suitable for them what are they see this color the color is blue the color is silver so these are like the mountain mist these bangles are silver and blue in color just like the mountain mist okay these are like the mountain mist colors are silver and blue this is important questions can come that what are the colors of bangles which are suitable for a maiden or a young unmarried girl then you have to answer that it is silver and blue like the mountain mist the fog and haze in the mountain that we often see it is the color of that next we will move to the next image what is the next image some are flushed like the buds that dream on the tranquil brow of a woodland stream what is this let's see the image beside a woodland stream what do you mean by woodland you have to first understand what is the meaning of this word woodland means this is a land which is covered with trees and bushes we can also call it a forest land a wild piece of land so in this woodland or in this forest there is a small stream a small river okay and beside the river on the bank of this river there are beautiful flowers growing wild flowers growing so these wild flowers also have small buds small little flowers which are growing which have not yet fully grown so like these beautiful pinkish colored flowers the bangles are of pink colors which are suitable for the young maiden 
girls okay why because they are also very fresh and very young and the maiden are also very fresh and young because they are very small girls okay not yet married so from here we come to know of another color these are the pink colored bangles suitable for the young girls let's move to the next image some are aglow with the bloom that cleaves to the limpid glory of newborn leaves now we come to the next line these are the last type which we will talk about for the uh, bangles suitable for the maiden some are aglow some are aglow means some are glowing these are also some other bangles which are glowing with the bloom that cleaves bloom means the word bloom means these are flowers okay these are flowers that cleaves to the limpid glory of newborn leaves what do you mean by limpid limpid means clear or bright the bright colored bangles uh, of newborn leaves now what is the meaning of this one it means these are the leaves and from the leaves flowers grow isn't it from the leaves flowers grow so some are aglow with the bloom that cleaves to the bloom means some of these bangles are as colorful as these flowers which hang with the leaves the flowers hang with the leaves only the leaves are also present beside the flower so these flowers which hang with the leaves the newly grown leaves newborn leaves just born leaves okay which are fresh bright green in color and so these are the type of bangles which are suitable for a young girl why are these words used over here new aglow why because these are the ideas which is quite symbolic to the young woman or a young girl very new fresh tranquil okay very um how should i put it very the freshness of the unmarried girls are referred over here with all those images the image of a bud of a budding beauty of a growing beauty which is not yet fully grown it is growing to be a very beautiful she is going to be a very beautiful girl just like this small little flower which is going to grow into a very beautiful flower okay next are these beautiful bloom that is the flowers the newly born leaves these uh, bangles which are suitable for the maiden's wrist are similar to these colors okay now we will move to the third stanza so in the second stanza we come to know that there are silver and blue colored bangles which are like the color of the mist of a mountain that will suit her next we also have the buds which are going to bloom on a woodland stream and also some are like the glowing flowers or the clear dew drops on newborn leaves all these colorful mist like bud like flower like these are all the bangles which are suitable for the maiden's wrist this one we have to remember now we will move on to the stanza number 3 stanza number 3 reads what some are like fields of sunlit corn meet for a bride on her bridal morn first let's see what are the meanings of these words what is the meaning of the word meet meet means it is suitable some bangles over here which is present which the bangle sellers have with them are suitable for a bride for somebody for a girl who is going to be married soon for her bridal morn morn means the word morn means morning so the bangle sellers describe now the bangles which are suitable for a bride on her bridal morning okay now he uh, he is going on describing the beautiful colors of these bangles what are the colors of these bangles some are like the fields of sunlit corn see we can see this picture in a bright morning these corn fields glow under the bright sun so they are obviously yellow in color and by the rays of the sun it appear bright it appears more bright yellow in color isn't it so these are the yellow colored bangles which is similar to the fields of sunlit corn they are all aglow with the color with the bright rays of the sun it is just like the yellow fields of corn okay so yellow bangles number 1 next we'll move to the second image some like the flame of her marriage fire now the second one is quite similar to the flame of her marriage fire now we know that in indian customs we find this 
this pyre this uh, this place of fire around which the husband and the wife take a move they move around this fire making certain promises so this is something very sacred to the indian husbands and wives so this the color of the bangles are similar to this fire which means that these bangles are reddish yellow in color some bangles are very bright yellow in color some bangles are reddish yellow in color similar to this marriage fire so this is something similar uh, to a thing that is very sacred in marriage the sacredness is also associated with these bangles these bangles are worn during the time of marriage so they are very pious and sacred okay next we will move to the third type and the last color of bangles suitable for a woman who is going to be married soon what is the color these bangles are rich in the hue of her heart's desire what is the meaning of the word hue hue means the color so these bangles are red in color the heart is red in color when we draw a heart in our copies what color do we draw we paint it with the red color which means that the color of the heart the love the color of love is red so the woman who is going to be married soon has a lot of desires her husband is going to love her there would be a very loving relationship between them so her heart is red in color so the hue of her heart is red so the color of bangle suitable for her is also red isn't it so then we come to know about three colors that first one is bright yellow in color second one is reddish yellow in color and the third one is red in color these three colored bangles are suitable for a woman who is going to be married soon next tinkling luminous tender and clear what do you mean by tinkling tinkling means a beautiful sound is produced when a bangle a uh, one uh, glass bangle strikes to another we wear more than one bangle isn't it when we wear glass bangles we wear more than one bangle so when one bangle hits the other in the hand then it makes a beautiful sound isn't it that sound is the tinkling sound luminous luminous means they are the shining bangles tender and very clear very beautiful translucent transparent kind of bangles are they like her bridal laughter and bridal tear this line is very important why bridal laughter and bridal tear see when a woman goes to her husband's house she is she has a lot of happiness within her isn't it she is going to get a new family her family is going to her new family is going to love her a lot her husband is there he is going to love her a lot okay she is going to get a, a very new family for herself but she is also therefore it is bridal laughter she is very happy which identifies her laughter but there is also the bridal tear there is also sadness associated with it why is sadness associated with marriage because she is going to leave back her own house her own father and mother isn't it that is why there is happiness and sorrow that is associated together okay at his at her marriage next we will move to the last stanza of the of the poem some are purple and gold flecked gray for she who has journeyed through life midway so last comes the bangles which are suitable for middle aged woman isn't it somebody who has journeyed through life midway it means that these are women who have already experienced their lives to the midway half of their lives are over that means they are middle aged women now for these women what are the color of bangles some are purple and gold flecked gray what do you mean by gold flecked gray this means the color of the bangle is gray or the color of the bangle is gray and it has some dots or sparkles of gold and purple on top of it see these bangles these are gray colored bangles but they have small dots of purple and gold color in it okay these are the bangles which are suitable for a middle aged woman now we have to understand why is this word gray word used over here the word gray signifies the it is a symbol of maturity that comes with age as we grow older we gain a lot of experience and we learn a lot of things so the symbol of experience the symbol of age and maturity is gray so the color of the bangle is gray but they also have these golden colored decorations or purple colored decoration made on the bangles okay next we will move to the 
the next lines whose hands now these middle aged women have cherished their these hands have cherished they have loved and cared for their children for their family whose love has blessed her love has blessed her children has taken care of her children her family her husband and everybody cradle fair sons given birth to fair sons okay given birth to children on her faithful breast she has always remained faithful to her children dutiful towards her children to her family to her to her husband and serves her household she has done all she has carried out all her responsibilities towards her household towards her family in fruitful pride she has proudly carried out all the activities all the duties the responsibilities that she has to carry out and worships the god and she is also very pious she is also very religious she worships beside her husband she is always truthful to her husband faithful to her husband faithful to her family cares about her family these are all the qualities i told you right in the beginning that there are some set standards that we require to follow in an indian um, in an indian family okay this have been coming down for a long period of time so these are the qualities in the end to be a very good woman we have to be very uh, careful about our family take care of our children do our duties Uh, uh, there are certain responsibilities to our family these are all the things that makes a woman very good isn't it so these are the good qualities in a woman these are the standard good qualities of a woman and uh, this is all about the uh, poem however i will obviously have to tell you over here that throughout the poem we see a number of beautiful colors these colors are symbol to something different so there is a we can call it that there is a color imagery okay there is a color imagery which is very important throughout the poem and uh, most importantly there are a number of figure of speech in the poem which we will discuss in the next class we have to clear our ideas regarding the meaning of the poem at first so first we have understood the meaning we will move on to the summary we will read the summary accordingly and clear out Uh, if there are any doubts and then in the next class we will move on to the various figure of speech used over here there are figure of speech like simile metaphor personification uh, color imagery so many things are over here so we will uh, learn about it in the next class before it we will see the summaries read the summaries once more okay c stanza 1 the bangle sellers carry the shining bangles to the village fair so this is all we have done that these bangle sellers uh, are carrying their bangles to the fair they invite people to come and see the different colored bangles and purchase them they are inviting the hawkers call na call their trade that they call the people to come to them and see what they are selling the bangles are delicate bright and rainbow colored which means they are of different colors and they shine brightly under the bright sunlight these beautiful colored bangles are symbols of those happy daughters and wives who will come to buy these bangles next we will move to the uh, stanza 2 reads the bangle sellers give an account of the bangles which is suitable for a maiden's wrist so in the second stanza we find that the bangle sellers are describing what colored bangles are suitable for a maiden's wrist for a maiden that is an unmarried woman silver and blue colored bangles are here which are like the color of the mist on the mountains which will suit her there are the color of buds which is pink in color growing beside a stream in a forest is suitable for a young unmarried girl and lastly some bangles are like the glowing flowers isn't it the bloom remember the word bloom or clear dew drops on new born leaves this is symbolic of the freshness of the very uh, the uh, the freshness the tranquility of this purity of this young girls okay stanza 3 here the bangle sellers describe the bangles suitable for a bride on her bridal morning over here the bangle sellers describe bangles which is suitable for a uh, for a woman who is going to be married soon on her bridal morning she wears bangle of which color she wears bangle of yellow colors which is similar to the fields of corn under bright sunlight very bright color bright yellow colored bangles some are like the reddish yellow flame of her marriage fire some are also of the reddish yellow color which is similar to the flame the marriage flame which is very sacred 
and last is the color of the heart's desire which is red which is suitable for a woman going to be married soon her heart is filled to the brim that is to the top desiring for love she desires for love that is why she is marrying isn't it from her husband red is the color of her heart so red is the other color bangle suitable for a young for a woman who is going to be married soon these bangles are what tinkling shining tender and clear and it is a symbol of the happiness and the sorrow of these women who are going to be married happiness why because they are going to get a new family love and everything and sorrow because they are leaving back their own family that is their father and mother so this is an important question why bridal laughter and bridal tear this we will have to uh, study next we will move to stanza 4 the last stanza in the last stanza what do we see the bangle sellers say that they possess bangles of the color gray which has purple and gold colors sprinkled on them here gray is the symbol of what symbol of maturity this is important these bangles are suitable for middle aged women for a mother who has cherished loved blessed and cradled her sons taken care of her sons and for a wife who takes care of her household that is her family and sits at her husband's side while worshiping she is very uh, careful about her family so this is all about the poem directly all about the poem but there are also some other informations that we have to take care of that we will do in the next class the figure of speech and everything the color imagery that we will deal with in the next class i have also provided you the words and meanings over here you can follow the meanings that are given over here shining loads is here rainbow tinted circles of light lustrous tokens maiden mist flushed tranquil woodland aglow bloom cleaves limpid newborn leaves meet flame of a marriage fire then in the next page you have tinkling luminous bridal laughter bridal tear gold flecked gray uh, then cradled and cherished these are all the meanings that you can write down from here in the book itself with a pencil so that you can understand the poem better that's all for you thank you so much